give people some some options. Use your words. You don't have an option. Equity is not optional. It's mandatory. And in order to give people equity, we have to have the hard conversation so that they have the necessary information to do what's best for them. Yeah. The hard conversation is so important, but I have this theory. I don't actually think it's a theory. I think everyone believes this. Everyone is bad at communicating. I don't know if it's just because the internet era and we're we're quick to fire off texts, slacks, DMs. I just feel like somewhere along the line, we all got really bad at communicating and then the world went fully remote during COVID and those miscommunications just got exasperated. And so I just like, I think about trust in an era of us being online all the time And it's so easy for things to break down. Like, I don't know the tone in which you're saying anything on a written message because it's, it's impossible to ascertain tone from a written message. So what, what are you doing? What would you recommend to people who are trying to build trust in this remote era when communication just feels broken across the board? Yeah. You know what I, when again, I'm going to go back to two things. I think having some conflict resolution training, I think every you know, just like many companies have mandatory sexual harassment training uh, that even if yeah. people have to click through them or whatever is happening with those. Still. Yeah. <laughs> is having, you still have to do yes, them. Yes, <laughs> you still have to do them. And I think to your point, a lot of us have been socialized to avoid conflict. I mean, look at it mm-hmm. in your personal life. If you're not doing it in your personal life, then you sure as hell ain't doing it at work. Often to be clear, I love conflict. I love conflict. <laughs> right. Adam Grant wrote in his originals book about how like the conflict you observed growing up informs the conflict and how you behave in conflict in the workplace. And like my family structure was like we always had things to debate and conflict was like seen as uh, just like an effort to learn more from each other. And so I love conflict and people think I am <laughs> wild when I say that. They're like, what? Why? Right. I'm like, because you learn, you're learning something through conflict. And they think of it as a negative thing, right? But it's not what yes. you say, it's how you say it. And so I was socialized in a household where we didn't talk about tough things. Right? And it was, oh, that bad thing took place. Okay. All right. Let's, Bury let's it. move on. <laughs> <laughs> Bury it. This, that's is what it is, right? And so I had to push myself to say, you know what? I can't move through my life. Uh, with the covers over my head. I can't move it because other people that I'm managing need something from me and I'm going to get the best out of them when I w- meet them at a level of not just basic bones, right? And I said, what is the the highest standard of communication? And that's honesty, right? And that's trust. And I think, again, it's very difficult because not all of us come to the table with the same communication tools, but we all, again, are adults enough to say, how do I upskill? Let's be honest with ourselves. Another part of trust is self-awareness. If you know that you're not a good communicator, and I'm sure that people have told you along the way, there's been indicators of that along the way, think about it. Um, and then what can you do, right? There's a book called Difficult Conversations. It's part I uh, by Douglas Stone and a couple of other writers. And I tell every leader that I coach or manage or teach Pick up this book because you can't be avoidant of conflict, but you can understand how to dive in and how to navigate it and how to bring it back to center. And again, I think as a leader and a manager, we can't opt out of the difficult conversation because that is part of our job description, right? And so think about it again. If I tell you, the, if I'm willing to tell you the good stuff and the bad stuff, quote unquote, at work, then you can trust me better because you know that I'm not just, I'm not holding on to certain biases. You know, I'm not trying to keep the the wool over your eyes, right? Again, part of part of trust, part of working on a good team is understanding that if we don't have trust, how do we rebuild it? And if you have not been a good communicator up until this point, you know what? We ha- again, power of choice. You get to decide. You know, I didn't do it right yesterday, and when I get it wrong, I go to my team and I say, you know what? I got it wrong last week, but I'm committed to doing it right, right? And I think again, when we make mistakes and admitting our faults, because again everybody is going to make mistakes inside the workplace because we're human. But when we avoid it each and every time or so, or you hear someone on your team say, oh, I can't talk to them because X, Y, and Z, you don't want that to be a theme. Again, let's go back to rebranding. If this has been who you are, let's show up differently tomorrow because communication is something we can actively change. 